Hello, uh, welcome back to another lecture. In this lecture, we're going to design this king post truss. And this truss has a, uh, a roof load of dead load and snow load. The dead load is 14 pounds per square foot, and the snow load is uh, 30 pounds per square foot. And at the same time, it's going to support the ceiling load of, uh, uh, ceiling load of, uh, what was that? 8 pounds per square foot. I think I wrote it down. Yeah, ceiling load. Yeah, a pound per square foot. Now, here's the thing. The load on top, it's going to push on this truss. And this truss is going to have the bottom core is going to be in tension because right now we have the tension support and, and that, that's the wall, basically. It's holding the wall back together. As you put load on, it's going to push on the wall so this thing is holding the wall back together. And this member is in tension, that member is in compression. And again, th at the same time, this member is subjected to a bending load because now we have a seam hanging out of it. So we are uh, designing a combination of uh, bending and tension here. So let's convert these weight. Because these are given per pound per square foot, we like to convert these to a uh, uh, link pound per uh, beam weight, which is a pound per foot. And again, taking a look at the on top of it, these struts are every four feet. And therefore, our turbo three was it's going to be four feet, and my total load is going to come out to be forty-four pounds per square foot. And if I multiply forty-four by four, that gives me one hundred seventy-six pounds per foot. So this comes out to one hundred seventy-six pounds per foot. And same things would be my uh, down here, which I got an eight pounds per square foot. Eight times four that give me thirty-two pounds. So this comes out to thirty-two pounds uh, per foot. And now we have that they completed that. Let's figure out the reaction first, and then we can calculate each point and uh, uh, convert these uh, uniform load to a load point on each joint, and convert this again to each uh, point uh, load. How do we do that? First, let's go ahead and figure out the reaction force. So my reaction force in here, I got three point one two. See how we got that. Is W based on, if you look at the beam formula, or you can really what we did, take a summation over one point, it's kind of the same thing. The reaction for R1, which is equal to R2, is equal to WL divided by uh, 2, and W is 176 uh, plus 32. I'm going to do both combined right here. Time L, which is a 30, and divided by 2, and now we're going to end up with. Uh, 3120. 3120 pound, or I'm going to have um, um, 3.12 kips. Same thing. So if I'm going to come in and take this load like here and just put them back on here and make a point load out of it, this will get one unit, this will get almost half a unit. And so therefore, we're going to end up with, uh, if I multiply that uh, 176 by 7.5, which is right here. And that will give me a 1320. So 1320 is 1.2. Let me use a different color. That is one unit right here, which is a 1.32 kips. And down here, I'm going to end up with half of it. And that half is going to be uh, uh, 0.66. So I've got 0.66. And then this is saying one, the uh, 1.32. And that's going to be 1.32, and that's here going to be 0.66. And we do the same thing for right here, and that comes out to, uh, um, we got 32 pounds per foot. Okay, so if you go 32 times 15, that should give me uh, 480, so I've got... 480 hanging up here, and if I divide that by uh, the half will be 0 0.24, and 0 0.24 will kind of say become 0.48. So now we have our, our load figured out. I want to know what the tension in this member is. Um, we look at the method of joint for truss, and we're going to have the reaction force, which came out to 3.12, and that's a 3.12. And then we had this two combined 0.66 plus 0.2 become 0.9. We have a compression moment coming in a D, and that's coming in an angle one two uh, square root of uh, five. 
and then we have this chord, the bottom chord, it's in uh, tension, so it's going to go this way, AB, and that's the diagram. And based on that, you can go ahead and calculate the, uh, you can calculate the, uh, uh, these forces. So I have one uh, unknown in y direction, so let's go ahead and say summation f of y is equal to zero, going up is positive. I have uh, 3.12 minus 0.9 <coughs> minus uh, AD time square root of uh, 1 divided by square root of 5. So therefore, my AD comes out to uh, um, what did I have? Four ninety six. Four ninety six, and then do a summation f of x. AB comes out to four point four k of four thousand four hundred forty four. So now we have that, that is done. Let's go ahead and design the number. And we're gonna go ahead. Um, we're gonna try two by eight. And then if you look at table four uh, eight, from table 4a, take a look at what's on the screen. I can find, figure out uh, my f of b. f of b is 1100. And then I have uh, f of t 725. PSI. Okay. So now I have both of those. And uh, therefore, uh, and the same fact in the table, looking at table 4a, I have CF factor, and for both uh, bending and tension comes out to 1.2, and then we can do a section property from a table, uh, uh, I think it was table 1b. So table 1b, I have uh, area comes out to uh, 1087.5, and SX comes out to 1314 cubic H. So now I have all that, and then from there, I'm going to go ahead and my calculate my net area. So if I look at my member right here, it's a different color. If you look at the member, and that's being a one and a half inch, is a two by eight, so it's a seven and a quarter. And then you have that three quarter inch bolt going through it. And from there you can calculate the area, net area. And our net area is equal to basically 1.5 times 725 minus the area of the hole. The hole is going to be three quarter inch plus 116 over large in it. And that should give me a 966. Okay, so now I have that done. Okay, now I have all that done. I'm going to find out the tension caused by the load. So the tension caused by the load is uh, Ft. It's called an Ft, which is a T divided by the area. And the T came out to 4,444. 4,440 pound divided by the 966. So that should give me... Uh, 460 PSI. So what we have right now, the tension, the tension is caused by this load, for by this load coming down here, the tension here, based on the load, uh, the stress, I mean, not the tension, right? the tension is 4,440 4, pounds. The stress comes out to 460 PSI. Now we gotta compare that stress to the stress of the wood itself, how much a two by eight can handle for stress. Okay, to do that, we're going to go ahead and look at the table 4.31. So from table 4.3.1, we've seen it many times. Our F prime T going to come out to uh, FT times CD times CM. FT times CD, CM, CTCF, and CI. 
So CF we know, CM is one, CT is one, CD. CD uh, from table 2.32. So CD from 2.3.2 is equal to 115 because it's a snow law, remember? Okay, so based on snow law, so that's 1.15. So our F prime T is equal, uh, I think it was, uh, 725, that's right, 725 times 1.2 times 1.15, and rest number 1, 1, which I'm not going to write down, and that should give me a, a 1,000 PSI. And guess what? That's bigger than 460, so we good to go right there. So that's, that's good, and now we have that. Uh, we know we're good at tension, but also this membrane has a bending issue. We're going to have a seal hanging off of it. Let's check for bending. In order to check for bending, we're going to find the maximum moment. And from table one, formula one, uh, formula table of the table figure one, or you can just calculate yourself or any steel book or any other book, you'll find out M max is equal WL squared divided by A. Okay, W came out to be 32. So I got 32 times L, L is 15, why is it 15? Because my unsupported span is 15 feet. So that comes out to foot pound, it comes out to 900 uh, foot pound. Okay, I don't want that, I want an inch. So multiply that by 12 and makes it uh, uh, 1080, 10, 800 inch pound or pound inch. Okay, now I need that because I can use this formula. Remember, F or B is equal to MC over I or is M divided by S. And we have our M, 10,800 inch pound and divided by S. Our S came out to 1314. And so our S comes out to uh, 822, 822 PSI, and that's less than, uh, less than, uh, oh, we're gonna find the bending over here. Less than what? Let's go find out less than what. Uh, so to find that out, and we have to go back to table 4.31, and from table 4.31, we're going to find out from this same table, okay, from this same table, we're going to have uh, F of B. Let me write this so we know what I'm talking about. F of B, take a look at the table. F prime B is equal all the stuff. F of B times C, D, C, M, C, F, C, T, C, I, all that stuff. So now, uh, from that table, we're gonna just not going to bother writing down. Uh, let's say F prime B. Remember, our CD is different because our CD has to be uh, for dead load. And for dead load, which is a permanent load, from uh, table 2.3.2, our CD is 1.15. So CD for this one is 1, no, it's 0 0.9, sorry. It's 0 0.9. Okay, so CD is equal to 0.9, and therefore our uh, things come 1100 multiplied by uh, CM is equal 1, 1, 1.9, 1.2, and uh, another one which has come out to 1188 PSI. Okay, 1188 PSI. Is bigger than 822. We okay. All right. So we know our uh, we know our um, bending stress. So the load caused by a bending stress here, which came out to uh, uh, 822, is less than the bending stress in a uh, wood for two by eight. Based on that, and. Um, But when we combine both of them, we have a different story here. When we combine both of them, 
Now you have a combination load. What that does, your CD factor is going to go from 0.1 to 0.9 uh, to uh, uh, changes to become 1.15 because the uh, the uh, the bigger CD factor here controls, which is 1.15. You have a load combination, and therefore our FP prime for combination load combination for the uh, combination of uh, bending and tension. It's going to have FB prime, it's going to be different. Okay, uh, let me, and that's going to be uh, um, equal uh, FB time, same up here where we have uh, CD, CM, or what else was it? CD, CM, uh, CT, CF, and then CI. So that comes out to uh, 1100. Time uh, 1.15. Again, for CD factor, it's going to change to 1.15. Take a look at that in table 2.3. So now then we have multiplied by uh, 111 and then 1 1.2 and a bunch of ones. So that comes into uh, 15, 18 psi. Still bigger than other stresses we have. But we need that because we're going to go ahead and say, okay, we need that because um, we want to combine both of them and see what's going to happen. So if you combine both of them, uh, let me go up here, right here, and that's going to be, uh, um, we're going to say F of T divided by uh, uh, F T prime and plus uh, F of Bx divided by Fb prime B uh, x, and that is equal. I'm going to just put it down here. So F of t came out to uh, 408. We did not calculate F of t. So F of t based on gross cross sectional area. Let's go back here. F of t based on gross cross sectional area. So our F of t, which we found one right here, and this was based on a, a, a net area. We want to do the same thing, just based on a gross cross-sectional area. So it will be 440 divided by uh, 1087, and that comes out to 408. Okay, so that comes out to 408. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug it back up there. I'm going to say, okay, so it's going to be... Uh, 408 and our FB trying to come out to uh, 1000 divided by 1000 and plus FB prime X came out to uh, uh, 822 822 and divide that by uh, uh, 1518 and that comes out to uh, uh, 0.95. So we 5% over in design, and that's that's good enough for now. That's it.